In this video, I'm going to do quite a lot. I'm going to introduce the slider. When, when we come to introducing new widgets, that's not a big deal. I'm also going to write the code in a slightly more efficient way. Um, and I'm going to do that by improving what we do in the imports. And we're also going to change um, one of the push buttons so that when um, they report to the um, the function, the slot, that we can actually take along more information by using the lambda function. Okay, so let's do some coding. Um, I've changed the top bit here. Before we had, um, we imported from PyQt 5QT widgets. This time I'm actually going to import from PyQt 5QT widgets and I'm going to, um, I'm importing all those things that we've had before so that we don't have to say if I wanted to use Q push button type qt widgets dot q um, push button so this will make our code just a little bit shorter for us and um, I thought it was important we started doing this now most of the code that I've got here at the moment um, should be familiar to you it's really what we've had before these bits here um, are like this because we've not used them then we'll see them in place I can actually run this code and uh, we've had this before pretty similar print doesn't do anything clear doesn't do anything and um, they did previously but I've taken that code away okay so let's um, change this then so that it does a little bit more I said we're going to have a slider so we're going to go self um, dot I'm going to call this s1 even though I'm only going to have one of them and then I'm going to go for q slider saves me having to, I don't have to write that q um, you know qt widgets dot slider this time open bracket now because it's a slider a slider can be vertical or horizontal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set mine as horizontal um, so that's slightly different to previous widgets where we put those things in and then I'm going to go for self dot s1 I'm going to set some of the properties of the slider up now um, I'm going to set um, the slider's minimum value. I go set minimum value. Um, I can make it go from whatever I want. Let's make it go from one. Doesn't make any difference. And then I'm going to set the maximum value. Set maximum. Let's make it 99. Um, I'm going to set um, a value that it starts at. So self dot s one um, set um, value, and we we can do that at other points as well. Set value. Let's start it at twenty five. Again, it doesn't really matter. And then what I want to do now is set the tick value. Now what that is, and I don't have to do this. You can you can really leave this one. Um, along the um, the bottom or underneath the slide, we'll have marks at different intervals along, and those whoops and those are um, how far away how far away apart they are. So if I can say ten, every ten along is going to put a little mark. Um, you can look at it later on, see if it looks okay. Maybe you want to make that bigger, maybe you want to make it smaller. It doesn't really matter. And then self.s1. Now at the moment, it won't actually show those values because I've got to actually say um, where they are. So I'm going to set the tick, whoops, set the tick position. And there are some set values for this. So I'm going to go for Q slider. And with that, it has um, some different things that goes them. I'm going to go for ticks below so that's just where those marks are okay so we've done um, all that now, at the moment we won't see anything let me see see what happens there look it's not there um, I've got to add it to my widget so I'm going to go for vbox dot um, add not a layout add widget and we're going to add self dot s1 Okay, so if we run that now, so there is actually got those ticks every 10, move them along, and there we go, we've got a slider, doesn't do anything. Okay, so let's make things a little bit more interesting now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some um, some some 
uh, functions now, some some signals and some slots. So what I'm going to do before we actually do this, I'm going to define some functions. So I'm going to def um, button click, I might as well call it the same as last time, and then it's going to take self like it did before, but this time I'm also going to take a value B, which will be the button itself, and I'm going to take a string that I get sent from that button. Now the way we did it previously, we wouldn't be able to do that. If you remember, we used the sender um, value to work out which button was coming um, and we could set code up with that but this time I'm just going to show you how we can use a lambda function to do that and at the moment we'll call that pass we'll fill that in later and then I want to do another one um, which we'll call v change v change and v change is just going to take self and that will be for the value changed um, on the slider because obviously every time we move it the value um, that it's at changes as well okay so let's go for self dot b1 dot clit now and then we want to connect and we're going to connect that with a lambda function so lambda and we're going to go self um, button so it's saying it's the lambda function is actually going to call another function so it's going to call um, the function which is um, button click and because it's calling that function we can actually within there put in the information we want it to take so could you take this button which is button b1 and let's see could you take the string um, hello from and what's button B1 from clear and let's do the same thing again I'm just going to copy that which is not a very good way of coding but never mind B2 and we're going to take, let's take button B2 with it and that one can say hello from print and then we've also got self dot s1 dot um, not clicked is it it's going to be value changed and that's going to be connected with and this time I don't need a lambda function I'm not taking anything else apart from the value itself if I had more than one um, if I had more than one slider I might want to take more information but I'm not going to and that's going to take um, get in touch with V change okay so I've set those up so now what I want to do is set up the code inside here so we can say if B dot text remember because B is a button so if B dot text is Prints. This is really just the same code we had before, and apart from it was sender.txt, then print self dot um, whatever's in the label text. Else we want it um, we want to clear because if it's not the print button, it must be the self button that called it, so we'll clear whatever's in that text box and then we want no matter what whatever happens we want to um, print whatever it says in the string just so that we can do something so if we click the clear button it's going to say hello from clear if we click on the print button it's going to say hello from print but they'll also do their jobs as well and then let's go into this value changed um, let's see so I'm going to go I want to say I've got this string my value, you could call that whatever I like, and I'm going to make that equal to um, self dot s1 dot value. I've had to turn it into a string because I want to change the or make whatever is in the um, value changed 
So in the slider, I want to put that value into my editing box if I move it. I mean, it's not a particularly useful thing to do, but it's more so that we can see what happens. And that should be it. Hopefully this is all going to work. So let's run that. Obviously looks no different. If I click on clear, there we go. Hello from clear. Click on print. Hello from print. And it's also try printing what's in the... Um, text box, there's nothing there. If I move the slider, oh look, it's moved, you can see it changing in the box there to 49. Print, it's printed 49, I can clear it. I've still got my other functionality. Hi from Melvin, print, there we go. So look, we've got quite a few things going on there. We've got this Lambda function, which is really useful if we want to send more information to um, our slot from our signal. Um, we've got all these different things going on here um, with the slider, and there, there are more things still, but setting minimum, maximum, its value, the tick interval, setting the ticks below, you can set them above and so on. Um, and we've got this um, stuff going on here, which is the, really is the shorthand stuff. It saves us having to write you know, QT widgets, dots, um, Q line edit, and so on. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing from now on. If you're wondering about why have we imported QT from QT Core, it's simply just for that one single value there. Okay, I hope you found it helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, think about subscribing. I've included a link to the code that I've used in the video below in the description. Stay in infield with Winfield.